Hi guys. Um, this lighting's whatever, but we're gonna deal with it. Also, don't mind that I'm gonna be pensively looking out the window that way. Just I got some zits, so we're just gonna pretend like I'm being thoughtful and just thinking so deeply and looking that way a lot. Um, also, I realize I never ever introduce myself in like any of these videos and. Just in my brain, I'm like, oh, people have been around since like the start, and I always get like emails that are new. And anyway, the summary is people have no idea who the hell I am, and that's a little egotistical to think that they do. But also, it feels weird to introduce myself. Like, uh, I'm Jackie, and I've been a copywriter for longer than half of you've been born. And <laughs> it feels weird to have like an intro of some kind of like. Um, but also, that's going to tie into the video we're going to talk about today, which is imposter syndrome and getting the words on the goddamn page, finally. Mainly because, um, you know, as a lot of you know, so here we go again, um, you know, I have like a mentorship program and one of the most common things that like throughout the first week, you know, and I'm not gonna like call out anybody, it's, it's a common thing that we all deal with is like, okay, signing up, getting started, and then it's like, ooh, I need to actually like write copy now and that like, creative block that gets in between the two. I've just seen it enough that I want to talk about it. And this may be a monthly thing because I think imposter syndrome is incredibly difficult for everybody in the creative hustle kind of world for some reason, which we'll talk about. I did a little bit into a philosophy rant a little bit here and there. I love to read philosophy. I'm just... Um, so I probably have a very weird approach to dealing with imposter syndrome, but you know what? Let's talk about it. Second of all, um, also I'm just going to put in a clip right here for a second, it's like 40 seconds or so, so um, that's going to tie into what we're talking about, so let me just... Sent. Speaking of my planner, I have to say, you all remember how I did a whole video about my followers' small businesses? Well, one of the small businesses that I didn't use, though I was planning to use and I am using now, she is a copywriter. So there is one person in this entire world outside of my team that's helping me do my planner that has seen my planner. But her name is Jackie and she gave me a really great suggestions on copywriting changes and then she fixed my grammar. Um, but she seemed to really enjoy the planner too, so. Cool, I think that's about how long it is, but um, yeah, I mean, Number one, just a little bit of a humble bread that I uh, worked on that project. Also, let's talk about it. So, I mean, obviously not like the disclosing the facts of the planner, but like, you know, um, it's so funny because every time I get an email about people dealing with imposter syndrome and one part of me is like, oh, I'm past that. I've been able to conquer that because I'm able to turn in copy and hit deadlines. But at the same time, like that project, for example, um, as soon as she emailed me, I was like, who the hell am I to work on a plan? Like, I am not qualified enough for this. This is beyond me. This is like real big, big sales of a big influencer of a project that's huge. And I'm like, who am I to talk about planner uh, me as if I haven't had like there's more stacks there like as if I haven't had planners since the dawn. That's what I wanted for a college graduation gift when I graduated college was this giant beastly leather planner so anyway the point is i think it's just something that we all have to deal with so here are some strategies that i use to even though i'm still dealing with it even though i have a writing degree right there that i paid god knows how long i will take to pay that off for um not that much i didn't you know um not that much but enough to where i have a degree and it still doesn't feel like i'm qualified to write things or edit things sometimes. So let's talk about that. Okay, so what to do when you're struggling to finally put words on a page, even if you've been doing this for a long time, even if, I don't, I can't tell if this lighting makes me look like I'm like being held captive or it's like bright and good. Anyway, I certainly never feel like I am qualified enough to make these videos all the time, even though I've been a full-time freelancer for since 2012 full-time freelance and then I started before that because I dabbled in freelance in college etc etc and I still feel like I'm not qualified to talk about um you know copywriting on the internet because I haven't like had like a seven-figure funnel I've had six which is up still up like that's 
making a business hundreds of thousands of dollars and it still feels like I'm unqualified to talk about copywriting on the internet because I'm not serious and professional and I haven't written a book and like all these other things that all these big name copywriters have. Um, so I think it's a thing that like it has to be constantly managed and I don't want people to think that like somehow it gets easier with time. It does slowly because mainly you have deadlines and people reaffirm that you're confident and you kind of feel better but it's still I mean, maybe there's people out there who just feel perfectly fine and blaze through and they have like no struggles and bless. Um, please make videos. But here are some things that I have come across throughout the years to kind of deal with this. Number one, I got this advice from Elliot Hulse, who's a fitness YouTuber, one of my favorites before he became like an alt-right cult leader, <laughs> sadly. Um, but he said to fuck it up completely. It was one of my favorite things he ever said. He said a lot of stuff that was really brilliant in his peak of like 2015 of, in my opinion. Um, and just to like, someone was asking him about like a fitness program. And I think, I think that was generally, or like a project or starting something. And he said, literally just fuck it up completely. Just, f just go in there and fuck it up completely. Now, for the most part, you're not going to. Like, that's not rarely going to be the case. And sometimes, if you just go in with the mindset of, like, this is going to be horrible, but let's do it anyway, sometimes that can help a lot with just getting past. Because I think, especially with copy, a lot of us think that it's going to be perfect the first time. It has to be just knocked it out of the park, perfect, right off the bat. And I do that. Like, I'm Sometimes if I think about a project too long, I build it up into this huge thing that like, oh my God, this is going to make or break my entire reputation. And if it, this isn't so good, <laughs> somehow my career is going to fall apart and I'm going to be like homeless next week. So I just accept that like, whatever I'm going to get on the page is not going to be the best thing ever. And sometimes I make a sentence that's like great and it stays in and it's wonderful and it like great. But you can always edit it, right? Like that's the thing is you can always fix it up. So mentally just accept it's going to suck. The first draft, even the professionals, even the best writers I know, their first drafts are usually still just crap for the most part. Not always. Sometimes, you know, it's better and you get better with time and practice, but you can't get better until you do the work, which is point number two. And this would dive into a little bit of philosophy, which also comes from Elliot and um, Thoreau, Thoreau, I think he's quoting. That's like, you have to do the thing to have the power, which basically means nobody, not if you were in my mentorship program, not if I, not if the best copywriter in the world approves your copy, there's no like magical, do yes, of course it helps to have someone review your work and say like, it's, it's good. But there is no, especially in the copywriting world, certifying body, there's no person that can come down from the heavens and tell you, you are now officially like, you are granted the right to be a copywriter. Like, good job. Now you may begin. Like, there is no... And even if you go through like AWAI certified course or like the ones out there where you have a degree, it still doesn't feel like, okay, you are now granted the power to be a copywriter. You have to write copy in order to get there. There is no shortcut. There is no studying. There is no amount of self-learning where you're going to feel like you now can like put on the copywriter jacket like I'm official. Like, and that just comes with creative careers, right? In general, if you want to be a painter, like you didn't study all the painters in the world, but until you're painting, like you're not going to feel like you are that title. A lot of like traditional paths you can, you know, go. And even, I know people who have gone through law school, they pass the bar, they're lawyers, and they still feel like, they are not qualified to like do something like it's still like a hard mindset thing you know and I think I'm sure there's a lot of like deeper psychology and like maybe your parent was mean to you and like told you you were bad at things or like you had a teacher who was like a raging dick and then you felt like you were bad at this topic forever which is fair like that is this is not what I'm talking about like you need to like 
the therapy for that. That's not my job. But, um, but I can talk about how frustrating it is to be in a creative field and still feel like you are not qualified to do these things. And that's just not true, right? Um, I say that as like, right? Like as if I still don't deal with it. Um, but okay, the third thing, so fuck it up completely. Um, you have to do the thing to have the power. Um, deadlines help a lot, which is where I think, you know, like why people sign up for my whole month thing is because I'm waiting for you to send, hit send on your project and send it in. Now, that of course can also come in the form of like, maybe in the comments below, like a few of you who want to be copywriters can like meet each other and like send comments of like, okay, I need to hit my deadline. Like I want to have a deadline to turn something in. Deadlines are powerful. I think that's like 90% of why I've been able to be a copywriter. Because sometimes I see this in my other creative pursuits that I do in my life and my personal life of nobody's waiting on me for like turn this in right like I do wood burning for fun and like no one's waiting on a project for me so I can push it off as long as I humanly possibly want which is the problem you know like the one good part about getting clients and getting out there is um you got a deadline you got someone waiting like this is now real and that sometimes can help you that's 90% of what helps me smash past like imposter syndrome is like I'm like this is due in two days. Like, it's no time. So deadlines help. So if you need to find an accountability buddy or whatever, like the cool phrases for that, um, that can help a lot. And like I said, in the comments below, if you want to like meet people and find someone that you can be accountable with, um, that, that might help, you know? Um, the fourth thing that sometimes helps me is to look at really, really professional grade, horrible copy. I always keep in mind something I tell people constantly and I'll never forget it because it was the bane of my writing existence. Apple at one point in time, and I forget the exact quote, but it was like something about um, that the iPod is funner than other like music managing like things in your pocket. My brain exploded. I almost turned away from Apple forever because funner is not a word. Funner is the worst word. It is not a word. Uh, and if it's being added to the dictionary, I denounce and reject it highly and entirely. It's So the point is, if a company with a giant multi-billion dollar marketing budget, pro I don't know what they spend on marketing, but I'm sure it's a fuck ton. And if they use the word funner, in their copy, no matter what you do and no matter how much of a blunder you make, it will never be fun. It will never be funner. <laughs> and at the same time, it didn't hurt the reputation and Apple is Apple and they just carried on with, um, you know, their branding, which is something else for copywriters, especially you have to keep in mind. So many of my clients have gone under and it's not my fault. So much like copy is the icing on the cake of um, of a business plan, of an overall marketing plan, of the CEO's reputation, of the day-to-day -day operations. Like, I cannot magically make a company that's, like, being run horribly profitable. That is not my job. I can take a company that's being run well and make their sales even better, but, um... I can't overturn like a stupid CEO as many times as I've tried. So, um, so the point is, is like, even if your copy isn't perfect, it is not your job to make the company have the reputation it does. It can help. You can make it sound more eloquent. You can make it sound clearer. It is not your job and it is not, you know, like, so the point is, although your copy helps a lot, it is not the make or break of every single business out there. Okay. If that takes a little bit of pressure off, because I think a lot of people see copywriters who are talking about, um, you know, or just business people talking about how fundamental copy is and like without good copy, like your entire company will fall in the ground and like burn and no. 
that is up to the CEO and that is up to the owners. That is not your job. I've seen a ton of businesses do extremely well with horrifically bad copy and they're still doing well. Of course, their copy may Sorry, my alarm to go to the gym just interrupted me. So <laughs> apologies. Um, the point is, take a little bit of load off, right? If, if copy doesn't convert wildly, of course, it's like a percentage of your fault. But it's also, you know, like people will sometimes hire me and where I reject and denounce clients is like they think that like they have no sales and they think that somehow by hiring me, I'm going to make them millionaires. And I'm like, no, no, sweetie, I will take your already doing well business and like exponentially increase sales. But like, I, it is not up to the copywriters to take a failing business and make it better. So take the pressure off. You are fine. It is the icing on the cake of an already good business. It is not up to you to guarantee profits and guarantee sales. That is not your job. Your job is to clarify what a business does on the internet. So not that you're not a big deal. And if it helps you and motivates you to like put words on the page to like tell yourself that you are the champ and you are the like, you're gonna make people millionaires, like cool. But a lot of people that's a little bit of pressure and you just need to take it off. Just Cool. Um, and then the last thing that I do sometimes is if I'm working on clients copy, um, I will take everything they have sometimes and copy and paste it into a Word document because the simple fact of having words on a page to work with and kind of meld and like I'll print them off sometimes and I'll go with like a red pen and like hack at it somewhere. Um, to have words on the page sometimes helps you get over there. The, the seventh layer of hell of Dante's Inferno is a blinking cursor on a blank page. I don't remember how many layers there were. I never really read the book. It scared me. Um, but there's no greater hell than staring at a blank page. None. Zero zilch. Absolutely none. Um, I forgot another point. I'll bring it back in. Um, but sometimes just putting their existing copy onto a page and molding it and playing with it and crossing things out sometimes helps a lot to just have something there and to switch on your editing mode versus your creating mode just to get the ball rolling. Okay, another thing I think I've mentioned in other videos is to just simply take like a pocket notebook and go somewhere away from your computer. Computers are extremely distracting. I will stand by that until the dawn of time. And just simply write out how you would describe this business to a friend which is why sometimes I recommend people write for industries that they know because it's easier to do this. Like if I was writing for like, you know, I've used this example before, like a heart transplant device. I have no idea. I don't know that industry. I don't know enough about that to be like, oh yeah, best friend, let me tell you why this heart transplant like thing is amazing. I don't know. I'm not there. But if you wanted me to sit down and tell you why my passion planner is amazing, by the way, I'm finally an ambassador for passion planner so you can get 10% off with my code down below. <coughs> it's like the, it's like a birth to child and I'm like so proud of it. Um but like if I wanted to sit down with like one of my best friends and tell them like why this planner is amazing, I could easily do that. So sometimes you just have to take the pressure off of like okay this copy is going to be absolutely essential and amazing and change this business overnight and just be like and take it into the mindset of like okay how would I tell my friend about this game, right? Like, we'll go into, I'll roast myself right now. I love Minecraft. It's one of my favorite video games. It's absolutely ridiculous. Do a lot of kids play it? You're goddamn right they do. I love to farm. <laughs> I can farm in the game. And I have convinced one of my closest friends to get it. I'm like, listen, okay, we can go in worlds together. We can build a house. We can, we can make a whole farm. We can be neighbors. It's fun. We can explore together. And all of that, what I just said, is copy. Now, it may not be the final copy. I may delete that by the time I don't sit down, write it down. But that is how you start to extract all the benefits for copy that you want, right? Like, okay, let's say you're going to sit down. Actually, you know what? Get a notebook right now. If you're stuck on writing copy, right now. Now, I'm, pause the damn, hit, hit, whatever, hit it, get one, come back. If you're stuck on writing, you better have a damn notebook in your hand. Okay, so what you're gonna do, real quick, you're gonna just bullet point. I'll do it right now. 
and I'll list things out for you. Okay, what is a store in your neighborhood that you'd like to go to and why, right? Okay, I love my natural grocers. It is the best store. It is, okay, so why? Why do I love it? Let's do this with my horrible handwriting. Um, healthy food at a discount. Um, endless options that I can't find at King Supers and the other great chains. Um, King Super, yep. I'm doing, you. if you're not writing, square up. We'll meet up and we will fist fight. I've had way too much pre-workout today. But really, I mean, really, really, just sit, like, sit there and think about, like, pause if you need to, like, work on your own time. What about the local store? Is there a coffee shop? Why do you like to go to that coffee shop? Are they, is, is it, are, do they have cool art on the walls? Is the coffee, like, made specialty? Like, they cute, add cute little, like, foam things into your coffee every time? Is there a local pizza place? You know, and even if it's not like the best pizza, you're like, damn, they always did it on time. They did it to me in 20 minutes. Like they have flavors that other stores don't have. Like, okay. Or just look at like things around you, right? Like these are my favorite headphones in the world. I have used them for two years now. The battery life is incredible. I can use it for three 12 hour days in a row. And then I finally charge them. The, they fit comfortably. All of that, why you choose to buy or go anywhere or do anything is copy. That is all copy, all of it. Now, some of it doesn't make the final cut and the final round because it's like a personal thing and like sometimes it's not why you want to advertise this business or service or product. But all of that is copy. And how you would describe that to a friend sometimes will help you get into a casual state of mind with how you describe things, right? Like, okay, and we did this with Ashley Amberger in her, her copywriting course, which is why it's burned in my brain. And she asked people to describe like, okay, what's your favorite coffee shop? And I went on there and I was like, you know, and I video, and she was like, sell me on your favorite coffee shop. And I was like, listen, I know you love a good story and you love to have a good blog about a cool business. And these, and okay, at this crazy, at this local Daz bog, it was owned by this crazy Russian couple and they were the coolest people ever. And she was always in um, the shoes with the red on the bottom, whatever they're called. And it's blanking for my moment, but whatever those are. And she was serving coffee in her like $700 shoes. And her husband was like this Russian bodybuilder and he was like six foot eight, blonde, scariest dude I've ever seen in my life. And was just this giant man and their cute little kid always with his iPad, he was like eight. And he always had his hair. And they were like, I was like, why do you own this coffee shop? What is happening here? Who are you? And I would always see them and like the coffee was made so good and the flavors. And every time I went in there, they would make my dog a little puppuccino. And they didn't care that I brought my dog inside the store. They were like, fuck the rules, you know, Russia. And um, huh, pre-workout. Um, but... <laughs> It was like, the, and I was like, listen, you love a good story. And these people are a blog, they are a blog series. Like they are so fascinating and the coffee so good. And the quality of the coffee is always top notch. And she was like, yes, they're like, she fully agreed. And she was like, oh my God, I need to, if I'm ever in Denver, I need to go to this crazy shop, coffee shop. But she was, but like that exercise taught me so much about writing copy because although I can't be like, this crazy dad's bond is owned by this crazy Russian couple who's like the funniest, like I would never include that in copy, but there is a, um, you know, small town feel to it. Like you go in and they know you, like they knew my name every time, or maybe not my name, but at least they would know my, my order. They knew it like, you know, and I lived like a block away at the time and they were so kind and like nice and the store was always clean and they were always renovating and like, all of that, all of those points to somehow be filtered down into copy. So, you know, uh, sometimes you just need to step away, take the pressure off and pretend like you're describing this business to a friend. Even if you have to use your iPhone and go on your voice recording app and say like, man, I love this gym because every time I go in there, like they know my name, the, the equipment's always clean. Like the classes pump me up. It gives me a workout that unlike any other business does like 
every single thing. We are all copywriters because we're selling our friends on things all the time. Dude, you gotta come out. Like, we need a, we need a bros night. Like, we gotta go out, dude. I haven't seen you in forever. We're gonna go to this place. They got, like, the most bomb margaritas. We are all cop we are all salespeople all the time. And we're doing it all the time. We're always trying to sell the people around us things and ideas, like vacations that we want to go to, restaurants we want to try. And it's just a matter of tapping into that and then turning that into words. Hopefully that helped. Okay, let's move on. Um, okay, last point. God, I was always like, I'm gonna make my video shorter. I'm so sorry. One day I will. Moving on. Um, the last two points is decoupling your work from your worth. With creative projects, it's very hard to feel like every time you turn in writing, like the rejection of it is not like a rejection of you as a person and you as an artist and like you suck and you're the worst and you should quit and like, um, that takes a long time. The first, the first, like, I don't like this is, are going to hurt. It burns. It sucks. It's the worst. You get up, you move on. And you have to just accept that they're not saying you're a bad, dumb person, but the, but just like the copy doesn't work for them. And sometimes it doesn't fit. And sometimes, you know, it does, it's not a good match. And you just have to decouple that, you know, like take some time away from it, take a day off if you have to, and just like mentally distance yourself from the work, right? Like, nobody bought, like, I don't buy a passion planner, and if, like, one page is printed wrong or something, which it's not, they're perfect, but, you know, if there was some ink stain, I wouldn't be like, the CEO is an absolute moron. I'm like, oh, like, this one, like, this just, whatever, or, like, the size, like, some of them are smaller than others, and it's like, okay, that size didn't work for me, I need the bigger one. You need to literally treat your work like it's that, like, it's a distant project, it's not you, you don't suck unless you actually suck <laughs> but no but um it's it's like it's this thing it's the thing outside of yourself that needs to just be reworked and fixed okay and then the last thing in order to get words on the page is to understand how your brain works and how you get motivated right i was a personal trainer and i that was the first time i saw how different motivation was um, really truly from the side of being the motivator. I had discovered that in the cross in high school, my most, my, my bigger coach, like the coach I had the longest, he was not a good motivator. It was not like a good hoorah, um, didn't hype us up. My first coach, my first year was the best. She was the most, the best, mo but anyway, so when I was a personal trainer, I realized that people are motivated very differently. Some people wanted me to be like Jillian Michaels and like, you get up, you worthless piece of shit, and you get on the fucking treadmill and like, go. And some people are like, yeah, that's what I need. And like, you gotta be like a real aggressive person with them. And that's what like turns the crank. And some people, if you talk to them like that, they will never talk to you again and you'll, def you'll need to talk to the manager. Um, obviously be very clear and like so you need to figure out what motivates you to get going what you know like even just journaling and like okay when when you do write a lot this is a huge thing that I recommend all people do when you write a lot and when you're in that good headspace like what the hell was happening in your life like you know and I'm talking about like record your sleep record your nutrition record your like workouts record um did you see a video that like hyped you up and got you going to, you know, I have a playlist on YouTube that's like my favorite workout playlist that when I'm not feeling it, I play that in my headphones and it gets me going, right? And you need to find what gets you, and not just hyped up to like want to be a copywriter. When you sit down and do your art, what were you doing in that moment? Like what was happening? You know, and sometimes it is just like you got a good amount of sleep or sometimes it is like the pressure from bills like a lot of times it was like I was freaking out I was like fuck rent is due in like three weeks and I don't you know like in the beginning I was like like just money stress was a huge like get up and go like get it done which is hard to replicate because you don't want to keep putting yourself in that situation but the understanding of pressure so then I would turn that into like man 
I really need a new computer. Like, and I, and I would think about that a lot. Like, I need that. I really need this. Like, this is go time. So finding yourself to be put in situations where you need to act. But of course, you have to find out what motivates you and when. Keep track of that. And that will be a huge game changer because you don't want to motivate yourself in the wrong way. Um, sometimes watching a lot of like, hoorah, motivation makes these figures, copywriting videos. You, like a lot of people think that, that motivates them and then like I get on a call with them and they're like completely demotivated because they're like I don't even know where to begin making six like this is I just want my first client you know like it's 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 a fine like do the things that you're doing right now help you take action or do they just sell you like a pipe dream and then you don't take action it is a very fine line that's why I stopped watching a lot of like business videos because sometimes it would motivate, but a lot of times I'd just be like, oh, fuck, man, like, okay, I need to hire people. I need to grow. Like, it would just stress me out more, and I wasn't taking action. Are the things you're doing make you take action? Yes or no? Narrow down how your brain works and how you get motivated. Crush it. Okay, cool. Great. That Another long video, but you know what? Um, lots of thoughts, lots of pre-workout. And also like you just deserve to like give yourself a damn chance at making this an actual career and the thing that's stopping you is putting words on a page and if that's it then like you need to smash that apart because that is just you did it in your own way and that's nothing to do with copywriting being hard so not that's not but like you know get out of your own way go get some shit done okay cool i don't know how to end these videos great bye guys <laughs>